There were so many close calls for drivers when an out of control speeding big rig led police on a chase. Good evening, I'm Clarice Tinsley. And I'm Steve Eager, it's nine o'clock. We're still waiting for police to release the identity of that truck driver. He was taken into custody after a lengthy standoff on Interstate 30 in Arlington. At last report, the driver is still at John Peter Smith Hospital in Fort Worth, where an ambulance took him right after he was arrested. Chase ended in a fiery crash on I-30 near Cooper Street and for another two and a half hours or so, Fort Worth police SWAT teams coordinated efforts to figure out whether he was armed, if someone else was in the cab, and how they were going to get him out without anybody else getting hurt. Both agencies, Fort Worth and Arlington, involved since the chase originated in Fort Worth. So we're going to take you back out there live tonight. Look at the scene from a text.camera. camera. That is Interstate 30, just reopened within the last hour. Fox 4's Alex Boyer is also on the scene with more right now. Alex. Hey, Steve and Clarice. Well, at this point, as you mentioned, we don't know too much about the man behind the wheel. We do know that the semi belonged to a trucking company located in El Paso, uh, but we don't yet know if the driver of that truck worked for the trucking company. Also, we don't know what his motive was for trying to outrun police. A dangerous high-speed chase from Fort Worth to Arlington coming to a fiery end in the eastbound lanes of I-30 near the Cooper Street overpass. A guy had jumped the median. I guess he was hurt. They had taken him by ambulance. That guy, believed to be the driver of this burned-out vehicle, hit by the semi as the driver sat in the breakdown lane. I'm here in the bank, and I'm waiting my daughter in the car, and then when I listen to the something explosion or two cars crash or something like that. This video posted to our Facebook page recorded by Ron Widup as he drove by the accident moments after it happened. He was driving west on I-30 and you can see the fire just flaring from the vehicle sandwiched against the retaining wall by the big rig. I mean, it's just crazy in itself, you know, crazy in itself. The chase started early Friday afternoon after Fort Worth police tried pulling over the semi they say was driving erratically. The truck driver plowing through several cars eastbound I-30 as he tried to elude police. There was a lot of traffic and then uh, a lot of uh, wheel tread all over the highway. People were going slow, dodging automobile parts, and, and it just all of a sudden stopped. Fort Worth police even posted video to Facebook as this continued to play out. It's a close-up vantage point as SWAT officers were gearing up to make their first move. Arlington and Fort Worth SWAT units teamed up an Arlington armored SWAT truck pulled right up to the big rig cab. Snipers from both Arlington and Fort Worth took positions all around the wreckage from high and low positions. Police believe there was at least one person in the cab, possibly two. Well, what SWAT was able to do was they were able to lower a camera into the vehicle, uh, the cab of the truck. Uh, that camera was able to observe a single male suspect laying down in the back of the cab and they were able to observe his hands, not see any weapons on view. Dozens of spectators lining the interstate, watching and taking pictures as the tense situation played out. The SWAT officers moved in, pulling the lone suspect out of the semi. Our cameras were rolling as he was taken into custody, bringing the nearly three hour ordeal to a safe conclusion. You know, when you look at this, you expect some fatality somewhere and absolutely none, I mean, you know, God, God, very, very much incredible, and God was watching out for um, all parties. And so far, the driver is charged with evading an officer. I'm told he also faces several counts of aggravated assault, one for every car he hit along the interstate. Police uh, at this point yet just aren't sure how many cars that is. Steve? All right, Alex, we know the police, through our reporting, we, we say the police haven't released the suspect's name yet, but uh, you've been out there, you've talked to people, have you been able to gather any information from police, more on the suspect's background, anything? 
not so much about his background, Steve, but a little more insight into what uh, police are looking for. Okay. Right now, uh, during a news conference earlier today, I should say, a Fort Worth police spokesman told us that investigators want to know if drugs or alcohol may have been in the suspect's system at the time of the crash. We know he was taken to the hospital to be checked out, and based on the chase alone, it would seem police have probable cause to get a warrant signed by a judge to have the suspect's blood drawn. Everyone clearly wants to know what caused this guy to snap uh, taking police on this ride. Again, it ending right here at this overpass at Cooper Street in Arlington. Steve. Okay. Alex Boyer in Arlington, thank you. Police say that 18-wheeler driver hit several cars and vehicles on I-30 before crashing. Amazingly, no one was seriously hurt. Another 18-wheeler is one of the vehicles hit, and that driver says he feared he'd end up crashing and hurting somebody else. He also says he knew almost immediately something wasn't right. Fox News' Brandon Todd talks to that driver. He joins us with more. Brandon. Yeah, Clarice, uh, Robert Saxton is sitting up in that 18 wheeler back behind me. He's been driving 18 wheelers for 28 years. He said this is one of the craziest things he's ever seen, and he's still a little bit unnerved to think that he was right in the middle of it. Why was the person trying to run me off the road? Truck driver Robert so, I mean, Saxton got, says it was all he could do to keep his big rig from running off the road on I-30 eastbound between Montgomery and University. And here come this truck like a freight train. He says a speeding 18 wheeler was coming up fast in his rear view mirror. And from there I started back into lane one and he just started banging me. Shoved me all the way into the dirt and I almost there was a big pole or an upright or a sign or something there. And all I saw was that so I just started pushing him back and he just kept bouncing me and next thing I know rubber, I still got rubber in the front of the, the, in the grill of my truck from his tire. And I don't know if you got close enough with your camera but you can see that he bent the bolts that hold the tire on. He says at first he thought maybe it was an accident. When the truck kept going and I finally it was out of my sight, ah, something was hinky. As a granddaddy used to say, something smelled rotten in Denmark. It was shortly after that Fort Worth police began chasing the speeding 18-wheeler. And when Saxton saw later how the chase and standoff ended. Hopefully he gets prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law so that this doesn't happen again. He's just thankful he Gidget. and Gidget are okay. What is that? Kisses? Honky kisses? This is part of the other trailer that hit me. They hit so hard that it broke off of their trailer and lodged into mine. I just figured the good Lord was looking after me and it could have been worse. All right, back out live here. You can see the uh, wheel there and those bolts that he was talking about being damaged there on his tire. He's going to spend the night here in Fort Worth and then in the morning, Cowtown uh, Goodyear is going to get him back on the road again. And he also says that if you look at the cab of the 18 wheeler that was involved in this today, you'll see a little gray spot on the side of it. He says that's the gray paint from his rig. Clarice. Wow, a lot of power there, a lot of momentum. Glad everybody is safe, including Gidget. Brandon, thank you.